Jimmy Wanjigi has been making presentations. He has been speaking from last year. None of you is interested in what he's saying. He has been at last year when he gave a proper forensic analysis of uh, the, the, the returns filed by on the CBK website. He paid an advertiser's announcement on uh, NTV, on Githeri Media, Githeri Media House Nation, to beam live and none of you were taking his comments seriously. At the time, I remember he said that we had overpaid our budget uh, by 900 billion. So by now, after one year later, exactly one year since he did that, uh, that TV uh, advertiser's announcement, he's saying that now we have overpaid by 1.3 trillion. So within a span of one year, we have added six, uh, uh, six, seven, 700 billion uh, paying, pay, pay, paying for a loan which is not attached to anything. Let me tell you, let me summarize to you because you guys don't like reading, you don't like watching long pieces, you don't like doing anything, you just, eh, you just like going for boys to men concerts eh? and then uh, pretend taking selfies there and then you purport. Yeah, and then you vote someone because of dimples, and then the Bungoma people who you guys despise, you think that they are rural people, those guys are smart enough to elect somebody like Okia okay, Omtata, who has also been talking about this debt issue. So, as of last year, uh, we, we, we had 2.9 billion, 2.9 trillion, sorry, because Uhuru's theft is on the range of trillions now. Eh? 2.9 trillion of debt had been acquired by, you know, by the government, not approved by parliament, not, uh, not attached to any project. And again, I repeat that debt in Kenya, debt in Kenya is, uh, or debt anywhere, has to be attached to a project. So if you are borrowing money for this, you must be saying, I'm building a super highway. I am building a Dongokundu bypass. I am building the, I don't know, Dongokundu, whatever, the, the, the bridge that they've never completed yet. Tanzania, they completed their, a Tanzanite bridge within one year. Ours was launched in 2018, has never even been, it's not nowhere close to being completed because the engineers that you guys praise, the guys who you suck their cocks, you go to their homes over the weekends, they are paid to work and they don't work. They use that money to go to Dubai and to uh, to Banjuka with, with, with our taxes. And these are the guys you guys praise, you worship them. They go to your churches, your corrupt clergy are embracing them. You understand? So 2.9 trillion was not attached to any that now listen, he he summarized that the amount of money which has disappeared inversely proportional to saying that the amount of money the Kenyatta family have stolen is 100 billion dollars, which is 10 trillion shillings, 10 trillion shillings. I remember his exact words. He said that is the net worth of Bill Gates. So you have a criminal enterprise, a family criminal enterprise, who have gotten accumulated the wealth of the richest man in the world, $100 billion. This Bill Gates doesn't sleep looking for money. His, his computer systems are all over. He's there thinking about acquiring patents for vaccines and depopulating people on behalf of uh, his sponsors, his benefactors behind the scenes. He's there. He's, he was there in COVID. Eh? He's investing in the COVID, in the vaccines and everything. He doesn't sleep looking for money. These guys, they are not inventors of repute. They are not manufacturers of anywhere. They just uh, give farmers a raw deal, milk farmers a raw deal. They've not done nothing. And they are, they are on the same league based on stealing your taxpayers' money. And uh, here you are, I'm finding people, anytime I talk about Uhuru, some people tell me, oh, ati usiongee mambo ya Uhuru, usiongee mambo ya Uhuru, ati don't touch Uhuru. Who, who is he not to be touched? First of all, he was the president. We should, we, we should be auditing. And uh, now you're telling me not to talk about Uhuru, to talk about Ruto's corruption. I, my problem is, if Ruto thinks he's going to get to extract the money that was embezzled by Uhuru through us, ah, he got it wrong, he got it wrong. Even if he hosts how many YouTubers, summits and social media, I don't know what in his in state house, he's got it wrong. He's the, the, the only place he should be looking for money is from Uhuru's bank accounts and offshore accounts, their family and whatever. That's why he should be getting the money, not coming to us. And even IMF, IMF have distanced themselves from this budget. They have said that this budget is outrageous. This budget, the, 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 it is, uh, an, it is not feasible. This budget is unattainable. The, the, the objectives is like these guys have delusions of grandeur, but they've been hide, hiding behind IMF, saying that IMF is the one who is pushing, pushing them. 
and they are saying that we have to pay debt this debt we don't have pay, we don't have any debt in the in the country we have overpaid by 1.3 tr trillion over and above the money that has been stolen and now you want us you and now Jimmy Wanjigi made another uh, poignant uh, uh, pr presentation he said that during the kibaki era they used to there were annual increments of 80 billion shillings on every budget you know every year they increase by 80 billion you know their collection and their targets every year it was by 80 billion same with huru he continued with the trend 80 billion but now ruto has increased the budget by 1 trillion from 1.9 trillion to 2.9 trillion he's hoping to raise an extra 1 trillion from taxing us so as to meet the budget this, those are delusions of grandeur this guy is crazy this guy is nuts these guys are only thinking about stealing how do you raise one trillion and you the, the problem with you people is you're not listening to jimmy wanjeke he's been talking every day about the the debt crisis it's not a crisis it's a manufactured uh, uh, discomfort by, by by the ruling elites you're being distracted every day by their gaslighting you do you you have to train yourself not to be distracted not to even laugh at their jokes not to even even entertain their presence like the idiots who went to state house the other day you 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 have somebody like cecily mbarire she goes for a meeting in uh, meru where they're talking about coffee reforms don't forget this coffee reforms is just a sham this is just a charade which the which is done every successive regime that comes into power they purport to fix the coffee problems the, Cecil Mbarire has been in parliament for 20 years just sleeping and farting she has never contributed or uh, submitted any motion as regards to agriculture and farming and anything related she has never she has passed all the bills which have created all the parastatals that are now created the bureaucracy which have enabled those companies that she was naming and you guys were saying oh Cecil Mbarire is very brave she has named companies who are coffee cartels those coffee cartels are in existence because of laws created by parliament the same members of parliament who don't talk on the floor of the house they are just sleeping and farting there they come now outside to gaslight you people there's this guy I talked about called Senator Medu Senator Medu has never spoken on the floor of Senate He's a comedian. He's a he's a funeral comedy specialist, going to spread his low vibrational energy, stale, stale jokes to peasants. And now the media now they caption, and then now they make him train that he's a very funny guy. He's, I can't laugh at your shitty jokes. Only somebody who has not gone to school can laugh at your shitty jokes. So these guys don't participate in the in parliament they don't they can't even raise uh, uh, issues about our debt crisis they do, they know very well that a lot of debt has been procured in kenya's name but not approved by them as statutory required by the by the constitution but then they are so busy politicking now there is a i don't know i've heard that uh, president ruto will be uh, in gidongori for fresher farmers a meeting uh, ostensibly meant or staged to go and shout down and embarrass wagadoni wa mushomba Adoni Wamushomba has been a staunch critic of the finance bill is in its current form and now they want to go they want to stage idiots like Kimani Ushongwa that Senator Medo Wanka uh, they go and stage uh, who Karungo Adango Karungo Adango you saw the genius of UDA the genius of UDA his br most brilliant proposal or discussion on TikTok is that we should have more holidays that if a holiday is a Thursday the next day should be a holiday you look at that guy you wonder did you even step in a school and if the answer is yes to that then you know our schooling system has a problem because if that's the best that a university can a, a university come out and say oh uh, Karungo Adhanga is well, is an uh, is an uh, alumni you, we have a problem in this country and we need to address them because these are engineered. These people, they create a problem. You hear Cecil Mbarire has passed all the bills which have created all these cartels. These cartels are legally uh, registered in this country. She passed those laws creating those, uh, those parastatals and whatever. And now this, and then now she comes to gaslight the public. You have Sakaja there. Sakaja, I saw him now. He has taken YouTubers to state house pretending now. It was, Sakaja lost the mantle of, of, of being the representative of the youth a long time ago. If any anyone is thinking that they are going to talk to the youth through Sakaja, you're you're messed in the head. Eh? So <laughs> Sakaja created the National Employment Authority to create to create jobs. Now, how many do you create a parastatal to create jobs, or do you create a conducive environment so that people can create their own jobs? This is a stupidity of the people that 
that you guys are worshipping and sucking their cocks. You need to snap out of it.